Hello again everybody and welcome to another edition of On The Range. Today we're going to look at an A10C Warthog system called the Low Altitude Autopilot or LAAP. The autopilot in the A10 is set up to take some of the workload off you so that you don't have to manually fly the aircraft everywhere that you want to go. It's not going to fly the mission for you. In other words, it's not going to automatically follow a path, a set of waypoints, or control your airspeed, or uh, strictly speaking, control your altitude for you. But it will give you the ability to set it up to do what you want it to do and allow you to focus on other things, whether it's communication, navigation, or scanning the area for targets without having to focus on flying the aircraft 100% of the time. So let's look at some of the controls and see how we interact with the autopilot. So starting on the left console, we have the LAST, L-A-S-T-E, uh, panel, and we have two switch or two functions on here that apply to the autopilot. First is an engage-disengage button, which is used for what you would guess it's used for to engage and disengage the autopilot. We also have a three-way toggle switch with a path, altitude heading, and altitude setting. So we have in other words, we have three modes that we can put the autopilot into based on the position of that three-way toggle switch. And also, on our left throttle, we have this red button, which is the uh, low-altitude autopilot engage-disengage button. Which, again, that's just a ready means of engaging and disengaging the autopilot. And what you can do, and what I have, in fact, is a button on my HOTAS mapped so that when I push the button it's the equivalent of pushing the uh, engage disengage button on my throttle. In fact it's the exact uh, same button in the exact same location on my setup. But you know you can no matter what kind of a setup you have you can map any uh, any keyboard key or any button on your uh, joystick or throttle that you wish and have that engage and disengage the autopilot for you. So there are three systems on the aircraft that sort of tie into the low altitude autopilot. Uh, first being the EAC, Enhanced Attitude Control System. And you can see that we have a switch here that has an off and an arm position. For the autopilot to work, we need to have this in the arm position and that system functioning correctly. Also, the IFC, IFFCC, has to be up and functioning. And you can see that that switch is set to on and that I have no uh, caution and warning indications telling me that any of these systems that I'm going over here are offline. And also we have to have a good navigation system set up. So my EGI, Embedded GPS INS, the navigation system for the aircraft, has to be on and functioning. So if we have those three systems up and running, the autopilot is going to uh, work just fine for us. So now we can get into the nuts and bolts of this and do a quick demonstration of what these three autopilot modes can do for us. And we'll start out with the mode that we're in right now, and, that, and with my toggle switch to the uh, path setting, we'll look at the path mode in the uh, low altitude autopilot. So the path mode is going to uh, basically stabilize the aircraft and control the pitch. Uh, you know, it can uh, work anywhere from, you know, it can be a level flight, you can be in a descent, you can be in a climb. But if I were to engage the autopilot right now in a five degree climb, and I'll do that right now, by depressing this button. You can see that on my HUD I have a indication saying path hold and that the aircraft is going to maintain the velocity vector exactly where it is in the HUD. It's just going to follow that path and keep me on this five degree climb. Now one thing to keep in mind is that the autopilot does not control throttle for you so I still need to control my airspeed and in this climb eventually I'm going to run out so I need to uh, pay attention and make sure that I don't let the autopilot fly me into a situation where I'm no longer able to maintain altitude and aircraft control. So let me disengage here and I'll show you uh, one feature. Uh, you can disengage the autopilot by making any uh, uh, any stick or rudder input. I'm just going to warning, roll the aircraft and you heard that I got a warning in the VMU that was yeah, warning autopilot. And that tells me, a, it gives me a warning that my autopilot is disengaged. Or if I wanted to, you know, as another example, I'll set up on a five degree nose low uh, setting in the path hold mode. And you see that the path mode, you had the uh, audio indication of the little chime. I have the path hold displayed in the HUD. And you can see that the aircraft is stabilized on the velocity vector 
as it is displayed in the HUD. And it's going to maintain this, uh, this exact uh, dive angle and go in that exact direction until I disengage the autopilot, which I will do by depressing uh, the button that I have mapped on my throttle. I depress the button, the autopilot disengages, and now I'm controlling the aircraft freely. So that's the path hold option. So that's useful for maintaining a climb or maintaining a dive. So let's go down to the next setting and that's the altitude heading setting. That's the center switch position. And this mode is going to, just like you would think, is going to keep us at a certain altitude on a certain heading. So let me uh, come around and, you know, this, this can be useful for navigation. I'll just steer on my selected waypoint, which is 10 degrees off the nose, and I'll use this uh, altitude heading out, uh, autopilot mode to keep me on the desired heading and at the desired altitude. So we'll say for argument's sake that I want to be at uh, 7,000 feet altitude and on this desired heading to steer on this, uh, this next steer point. So I can stabilize on 7,000 feet get going on the correct heading. Ah, close enough. I engage the autopilot and it's, the aircraft is going to keep me on this heading and at this altitude. And again if I make some stick and rudder inputs warning, autopilot. it automatically disengages and I get the VMU warning saying warning autopilot telling me that it has disengaged. And of course if I do want to disengage it uh, manually myself without that stick and rudder movement I just either depress the button that I have mapped on my my throttle or I depress the engage disengage button on my panel. So those two modes are very very useful for in route navigation but uh, in a tactical environment and I'll show you the third setting right here and this is the one that I find myself using most often and it is labeled as altitude but really it's an altitude and Okay, now I have it set to that third setting. It's an altitude and uh, bank angle hold mode for the autopilot. This is useful for setting up in a holding pattern. We'll just say that, okay, I want to hold at about 2,000 feet in a, I'll oh, say about a uh, 30 degree bank. And I'll call that good 1,800 feet. I'll engage the autopilot. And you can see that I have altitude hold displayed as my selected mode and that it is engaged. And it's going to hold me at this altitude and at this bank angle. And like I said, this is the one that I use most often, because, you know, say for example, I'm, uh, you know, I've I've reached my IP initial point for a mission, and I'm just, you know, scanning for the target or, you know, doing some communications with the JTAC. This is, you know, now a mode that I can put myself into, where I'm just going to stay orbiting a certain location, and can do other things in the cockpit, particularly you know, look around without having to manually fly the aircraft where I want to uh, where I want to go. Now one neat feature of this is that by like with the other two modes if I made uh, stick inputs laterally you know to adjust my roll it would disengage the autopilot but in the altitude hold mode I can make stick inputs and it's not going to disengage it's just going to follow my lateral stick inputs in roll and keep the autopilot engaged so I can roll back to the left and it'll keep me at the same altitude but I can adjust my path across the ground to set up in whatever you know, holding pattern that I want to. So one thing to keep in mind when engaging the autopilot is that your aircraft has to be within certain perimeters and generally speaking altitude, and I'm back in altitude. the uh, path hold mode on my setup here generally speaking I need to be no more than 10 degrees of bank I'm uh, banked down to about, uh, geez, almost 40, 35 degrees right now. And watch what happens if I try to engage the autopilot. Yeah, nothing happens. So I need to be no more than 10 degrees in bank angle. Engage the autopilot and you're all set. That applies also to the altitude, altitude, altitude. heading setting, the center switch position. If I'm more than 10, de 10 degrees, altitude, altitude. it is not going to engage for me. So if I bring it back to a reasonable, reasonably level flight, then it does engage. Now the third switch position, the altitude setting. Warning, autopilot. If I try to engage this at a high bank angle, it does engage and it does hold. 
up to a certain point and generally speaking that's altitude, no altitude. more than about a 40 degree bank is what you're going to look for on that altitude hold setting. Uh, you're just altitude, going to get um, the aircraft fighting you and it's going to eventually here kick the autopilot offline. So go for a moderate bank angle, you know, anywhere up to about 40 degrees before engaging the autopilot in the uh, altitude hold mode. So those are your three modes of the Low Altitude Autopilot, LAEP. Now I mentioned that certain systems had to be operational for the autopilot to function. The first of those was the EAC system. So just as a demonstration, I have the autopilot engaged in altitude hold mode right now. So let's see what happens when I disengage the EAC and I'll toggle this switch from arm to off. Warning, autopilot. When the EAC goes offline, I get, among other things, the audio cue saying that my autopilot is offline and as you can see it did disengage the autopilot so I needed to take manual control of the aircraft. If I try to re-engage the autopilot, which I'll do right now, with the EAC off, the autopilot will not engage. So to clear that out I have to rearm the EAC and now if I try to re-engage the autopilot you can see that it is up and fully functioning. Also, if one of my uh, YAW or PITCH SAS channels happens to get kicked off, and this will usually be, and if this does happen, it will disengage the EAC, Warning, but uh, that is something that it can also disengage the autopilot on you. If one of your uh, stability augmentation systems happens to kick offline, and that just uh, automatically takes the EAC offline as well, that's another system that I've got to get to a description to eventually. It's a pretty neat system. It does a lot for you. I also mentioned that the IFFCC, if, -C -C, if that system was offline, the autopilot would disengage. And I also mentioned that the EGI, EGI, Embedded GPS INS, navigation system on the aircraft, if that is not up and fully functioning, the autopilot will disengage. Like for example, if I put it into the old HARS mode Morning, and take the uh, IGI offline, the autopilot disengages and in just strictly the HARS mode, I can no longer use the low altitude autopilot. So I have to go back to the normal navigation system and now the uh, and re-engage the EAC because uh, losing the IGI does uh, disengage the EAC. Now I have autopilot functionality restored. And that becomes especially important if you start to lose aircraft systems. If you get a whole bunch of warning lights and uh, you know in my experience some of the first systems to go are those navigation, EAC, and some of the other you know, flight control uh, computer systems. Those are the first things to go and with that uh, goes your autopilot capability as well. And folks that's a description of the Low Altitude Autopilot LAAP system in the A10C Warthog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you found it useful, please do consider subscribing to the channel, leaving a like, and dropping a comment in the comment section below. It sure does help out a lot. So thanks again, and I will see you next time.